hi, my name is Caleb Dunby. I'll be teaching the Viewer's Choice class this week instead of Eric Hansen because he was stolen away to go to dinner. Uh, so I'm 18 years old, I'm a 2100 USCF after my latest tournament and we'll be going over a game from the Spring Classic that happened here in St. Louis between A Wonder, Le or a Wonder and Wonderman. So it started e4, c6, knight c3, d5. So we have a Karo Khan. After knight f3, we have the two knights variation. So bishop g4, h3, bishop f3, queen f3, and e6. So this is all pretty standard stuff. Uh, another move here is knight f6, which immediately puts pressure on this pawn. And a way this could continue is like e5, pushing the knight back. And we'd get some line here with like e6 ideas. Could be pretty nasty. But anyways, e6 was played. So white continued development with d4. Black now played knight f6. And bishop d3. Just supporting the central pawn here. So Black's idea basically is that you get a front structure like this, but you have no horrible bishop on c8, right? Because usually in the French, the bane of your existence is getting this bishop to do something useful. But in this case, it's traded itself off for the knight on f3, which can often turn into a powerful piece. So the game continued, he takes e4, knight takes e4. So in exchange for getting rid of this bishop, uh, black has wasted a tempo, playing c6 in a sense, whereas usually you'll play c5 in the French. And so in this line, black is giving up his central pawn uh, in some space in order to make this exchange of pieces. So after he takes and recaptures, uh, queen takes d4. Winning a pawn. All right. So white castles and black captures on e4. And there are some crazy lines here in the notations. <laughs> All right. What has Eric left me with? So apparently in previous games, knight bd7 has been played. And this is Iskand Iskandarov versus Kam. Kamra Kulov. Very exciting. All right, so knight bd7, and this game continued rook d1, bishop e7, bishop e3, queen b4. So it looks like white is activating all of his pieces and with tempo against black's queen in exchange for this central b pawn. So this game continued c3. And queen takes b2 isn't the best of ideas, because in this line, uh, well, let's see. What do you guys think white could play after queen takes b2? Rook to b1. So yeah, just rook to b1. And if black tries to grab another pawn, I imagine yeah. rook takes b7 is going to be very strong. So this b7 pawn is actually critical, because now c6 is falling. And this king is a lot less safe with the rook on the seventh. So maybe it's something like castles. Um, how could white continue, continue here to uh, really stick the nail in the coffin in the black's position? Uh, so yeah, that's one way. Just trading off these pieces. And then black loses a piece. Yeah, that's right. So black would have to continue with pawn takes. And from here, how do you think white should respond? There are a few tempting moves. <laughs> a few very tempting moves. Right. So how might that line go? So bishop takes, king takes. And then obviously the check, king g8. And is there a mate here? Rook d4, maybe f5 is holding together for the moment. With this bishop covering the, the critical dark squares and this pawn 
playing some defense. So maybe instead, just taking the knight back. <laughs> Should be simple enough, right? Um, down no material. This king's going to, going to fall pretty soon. This bishop really can't be defended. Like the only safe square for this bishop is on a3, which I'm, I'm not sure it makes so much sense to be placing your pieces on a3 when your king is under attack, and then f7 will just hang. So yeah, black, that's something you have to watch out for. Uh, you don't want to get too greedy in opening, especially like this, where white's already up so much in development. And on the Karo Khan, a lot of the times, this opening this b-file for white's rook just results in disaster. So what happened instead here? Looks like queen a5 was the move that was chosen. So white continued with b4. The queen here did c7. And white continued playing with tempo against this queen with bishop f4. So what do you think the idea behind queen c7 was if black knew that bishop f4 was coming anyways? Right, that's right. So uh, this pawn structure for black with e6, c6, b7, and f7 is very solid. But in order to break out of white's attacking chances, you're eventually going to break with c5 or e5, depending on the position. So in this case, black wanted to play e5 to uh, give, him, give his pieces some space and control some critical squares like d4 and f4. So bishop g5 was played. Um, and then after knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, king takes e7, queen takes e4. Now black's traded off some pieces, so white's attack is much less, I don't know, intimidating, I would say. Because if you go back a few moves, this bishop and this knight are both, sorry, before e5, this bishop and this knight both really line up nicely against black's dark squares. For example, something like queen d8 here. Um, Knight d6 would, of course, be terrible. Um, forcing bishop d6, bishop takes d6, and then this king is stuck in the center. This rook is on the same file as the queen. And I mean, the two bishops are just way too strong here. So e5 is a very critical move, I would say. So bishop g5, knight e4, bishop, or bishop e7, king e7, queen e4. So black continued to break out in this line with knight to f6, queen e3, and just getting on the open file. So it looks to me as though black is up a healthy pawn, but uh, white has a good bishop in exchange for it, and this king is still stuck in the center, which isn't quite where it would like to be. So this game went bishop c4, b6, rook e1, e4, bishop d3, Queen e5, takes, 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 takes. And they agreed to a draw shortly after. Yeah. So yeah, that was actually between Mamadov versus Navarro. All right, but anyways, anyways, this entire line was avoided from this move. So instead of the standard knight bd7, which we've seen a couple times, uh, Sorry, Beside, yeah, knight takes e4 was played instead of the standard knight bd7. So white, of course, recaptured. Knight d7 was played. Bishop f4. Just developing the pieces, aiming at these loose dark squares that black has created since playing e6 and c6. So here. Rook to c8 was played. All right, it's sort of a mysterious move to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I suppose just trying to gain control of some of these dark squares and prepare things like c5 in the future, or possibly b5 in the future, or b6 is something black could be thinking about, With in which case he would need support for the c pawn. So rook a d1, of course, gaining a tempo on the queen. Queen to f6. 
rook f e1, and knight c5. So another option, it looks like, well, what do you think another option could have been here? Remember, Black Skulls, now that he's up a pawn, he wants to trade down some pieces and gain some, gain some more space for himself to uh, try and counteract some of this activity in these bishops that white has. Yeah. So yeah, e5 is the move that black would like to play. But uh, the reason it wasn't played in this game is because white has a very strong move here. You'd think like uh, something like bishop g3, for example, queen takes f3, bishop takes f3, and black would be doing fine here. Because the queens are off, you're probably not going to get checkmated, and uh, you can complete your development without too many issues with even something like f6, just supporting the pawn. But the issue is, uh, white doesn't move this bishop, because white can make a stronger threat. So what might that be? Rook takes d7 is a very interesting move. Um, yeah, you have. You're along the right tracks. Um, White's trying to get at this king, but the issue here is you're just a little bit too slow. For example, king e8 here, and then if you try to follow up with some sort of checkmate, rook d8 is in time, I think. But you're close. You're close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, queen g4 immediately. Yeah. So the point is you're stepping out of this pin that black had on your queen. So now you can move your bishop freely with uh, no issues. And if black dares to take here, of course, this is checkmate immediately. So yeah, this would actually probably be disaster for black because black would have to do something like knight b6 or rook to d8 to step out of this. And if rook d8, obviously bishop g5 wins material immediately. And if something like knight b6, uh, bishop takes e5 would be a very strong move. Now that the knight is no longer defending the e pawn, you can't recapture because of these rooks, which are suddenly very well placed to attack the black king. So that's why e5 wasn't played. Sorry, went back a little too far. So black, instead, decided to play knight to c5, attacking your bishop. So this is actually a very good move, because white can't move this bishop anywhere <laughs> to save it. So keeping in mind that white needs to act with uh, some urgency to maintain his advantage after sacrificing a pawn, how can we keep black from developing his pieces? Or even, in a broader sense, uh, continue to like move with tempo, making threats with each move. So this is definitely a critical point. Like When you're sacrificing a central pawn like this, uh, you definitely need all of your moves to have a very distinct purpose, or else black will just develop his pieces and be out of trouble. Right, you preserve the bishops yeah. in this line, but uh, I'm not so sure you want to be trading queens because. Yeah, now that the queens are off, Black's king in the center looks a lot more well placed. Well, not even well placed, but less poorly placed than in, in the past. And black's development is still awkward here, but uh, maybe something like f6, which is always an ugly move. And I would hate to hear Ben Feingold yeah. <laughs> critique me, but <laughs> uh, f6 makes a lot of sense here. Because once the bishop has to move, which I'm not sure where you want to put the bishop, if you put it on d6, I'll take and play king e7. If you come this way, uh, my plan is to play king f7. 
sort of artificially ca castling. Well, actually, that's probably not the best move in this case because yeah, white can play b4 and then rook d7, and th things get very ugly. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure. I think white would like to keep the queens on to preserve his advantage because I don't, no matter how you look at it, you are just down a pawn in this position. So if you're not getting something very concrete, it's tough to justify. But yeah, you want to keep up the pressure while limiting peace trades. So what squares do you weaken when you put all your square all your pawns on light squares? Yeah, you weaken the dark squares. So in this case, white wants to attack the dark squares with queen g3. <laughs> yeah, queen e3 is another idea, but uh, the direct threat this is making is bishop to e5, when uh, g7 might be hanging, but maybe not due to some tactics, and also bishop to d6, when you, if you ever take that bishop, queen takes, or for example, say black takes and then does nothing, uh, yeah, and then does nothing. <laughs> um, you're just going to get destroyed along the dark squares after something like bishop g5, queen takes b2, and there has to be some mate here, but yeah, just queen to d3 is probably more than enough when the queen's getting into d7 or d8 and everything is checkmate. Oh, queen c7 is another very, very nice move. Very fancy. <laughs> So of course, yeah, of course this queen's off limits because of rook d8 checkmate. So let's flip back to the notation here, see what actually happens. After queen to g3, black did not take this bishop and instead went pawn grabbing, <laughs> which I'm not so sure about this. I'm not so sure about this. So. Wow, all right, a lot of tempting options after, after your opponent goes hunting for pawns. But in the game, white chose to save this bishop with bishop to f5, because now this is a pin. And what a black grab some more pawns. <laughs> Which, all right, now how should we continue? All right, let's identify some critical squares, right? So this pawn is obviously critical, right? Because if this pawn were to go away, this rook would be a monster and your king would be checkmated. So because this pawn is so critical, you would like to be attacking it as many times with as few defenders on it. So this knight's defending well, and this right now this queen is defending it, and uh, you only have this bishop and this rook attacking it. So how can you get more pieces attacking e6 and just bringing them closer to the king in general? Oh, bishop to d6. Yeah, bishop d6 right away is a very strong move. So bishop takes d6, which obviously is a horrible move. <laughs> of course, queen takes d6, and all of the checkmates are very apparent. Um, you have to play something like b6 or something terrible in order to not lose a knight. And then here, I'm not so sure that works immediately. Uh, actually, I think the problem, the problem is pawn takes, right? And how do you continue here? Yeah, so maybe uh, the sort of counterintuitive, well actually no, it's not a great move. Man. Wait, this might be a crazy move. <laughs> yeah, that's the move I was about to suggest, but I think after queen d5, uh, you just don't have too much here. 
queens are being traded. This is sort of insane. Very difficult to believe that white's not just winning. This is the actual position that Jane White. No, this didn't happen. Uh, so yeah, so bishop d takes d6 wasn't played, which obviously if there's no immediately win, that clearly looks very, very bad. Instead, black responded with queen to a5. So trying to bring his queen back to defend some of the dark squares, defending this knight. So then the game continued, bishop takes c5. So again, removing defenders of the z6 pawn. Queen takes c5. And the sack was played. <laughs> so f takes e6, rook takes e6, bishop e7 was played. Apparently, king f7 was another line. And how might white continue here? Because it's not as easy as you might imagine to give checkmate. The king can be very slippery. Right. <laughs> yeah. Queen where? B3. B3, yes. All right. So, okay, first of all, rook to e7 is uh, not quite right. Because I think you can actually get away with taking this. And suddenly, white's just out of pieces to attack with. If you try checking, yeah, if you try checking just queen block. And there's no fancy yeah. distraction tricks because this bishop covers all. But yeah. So queen b3 seems like a nice move. Um, that's, that's very true. <laughs> um, queen b5 might be the move. It seems kind of ridiculous, but... Oh yeah, rook to d7 mm, might, might be good. Somehow, somehow, some way, I'm searching for defense. But I think even, uh, <laughs> I think queen a2 here is, is the winning move, which is... Well, actually, I guess queen a6 is forced. Um, okay, but no, the, the, yeah, well, this is ridiculous, clearly just, clearly just queen f3, no need for such shenanigans, and you're just mating on f7. Well, maybe h6 or something insane, but I can hardly, I can hardly imagine. No, All right. Well, you're not. You're definitely not looking for, for a perpetual here. But yeah, queen a2, queen a6. Ah oh, man, this is unbelievable. All right, there, there's another win though. There is another one. So let's let's find a simple one. <laughs> so what's the main problem here? Yeah, the rook is hanging. So can you solve this problem with tempo? Yeah, just rook e5, right? So black will have to move his queen away. And now rook d7, king g8. Um, I'm not actually sure. Queen f3 seems like a reasonable move. It's not the move Eric gave here, but uh, I think the issue is this queen already defends the critical square here. And if you're not careful, you're just down a piece. There are some absurd, absurd moves, though, that I'm noticing, such as rook d5. Oh, sorry, it's black's move, even. <laughs> but yeah, if it were right to move here, there would be some absurd moves, such as rook to d5. But uh, maybe h h5 is enough 
for the moment, probably h6, rather. Just uh, creating a flight square. And again, it's tough to win. So sorry, yeah, rook d7, king g8. Uh, you're very close. You're very close. So the problem with this is, yeah, something like queen d4 protects g7. And then, yeah. We'll check, first of all, queen d5. Oh, excuse me. But second of all, yeah, just queen d5. There's no second of all. Any other move is checkmate, but queen d5 will preserve. But you have the right idea. So the idea is black has a very difficult time defending this pawn. Well, Earth takes pawn is a little ambitious. <laughs> Because after takes and something like rook g5 here, just queen f7 defense. But yeah, like you're saying, rook g5 immediately is uh, the way Eric gave. So now if you try something like queen to d4. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry, yeah. If, oof. Well, the queen defends that sideways as well. So the only. <laughs> The line I saw was actually queen b3 after queen d4, but of course the rook just moves backwards. So, well, g6, you just you just break through immediately again. But yeah, so this is why king to f7 is no good after the sacrifice. You can't play here because you'll just lose. So instead, bishop to e7 was played. And now can we find the next move? Uh, yeah, that's totally reasonable. Let me see what was actually played, actually. <laughs> oh my goodness, Eric is giving 30 lines. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, those were the king of seven lines. Right, queen g7 makes a lot of sense. Um, maybe it's a bit slow, because... Why would it be a bit slow? Because <laughs> to rook to f8, and now don't get don't get too uh, too antsy here, because black has some threats, okay. right? And maybe you're getting checked a few too many times. Well, maybe not no, no, actually. Not yeah. Hmm. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be taking this f pawn so quickly, but perhaps just rook to f7 here. But then you can do uh, rook to uh, c7. The other rook. The other rook. Instead of that one. What? Rook to c no, no. Talk about black. Instead of black killing. Oh, yeah. the other rook can. Yeah, the other rook will also work as well. Yeah. You can yeah. defend. Yeah, that's not good. You, you, black does have more bishops. Which is very, very difficult to get around. So yeah, just just rook you one immediately, and uh, and now your queen is still guarding the c7 square, which has turned out to be important. So I think Eric gave another line here, which is to play rook e5 first, and after queen b4 to play c3. So the idea is you're trying to drive this queen away from the defense. So queen a3, and now queen takes g7. And after rook f8, queen takes h7, a6, queen g6 check, rook to f7, it's getting very nasty. <laughs> and uh, it's very difficult to defend here against all of these threats. So this is where Eric ended this line. Hmm. He probably ended the line here because queen to g8 is a very, very nasty move. Yeah. And how does black defense? <laughs> you can't move the rook because your queen's on pre. And you can't move the bishop because after this, now you have to move the rook 
and the same issue remains. That's a very, very nasty idea by Eric. Okay. So, Black smelled the danger, as you can believe, probably. <laughs> Sitting across the board here, I might be a little bit afraid of some of these lines. So he tried to cast a lot of it. So of course, giving back the bishop. But white's also down a couple, couple clean side pawns over here, which is nothing to be ashamed about. <laughs> so black continued with rook to f7, which Eric has a few lines here that white could have played. We'll go over the main line first. So how would you respond as white to this? Just queen d5 there, right? Queen b3, queen d5, breaking the pin. Or even just queen takes pawn check again. Queen. Oh, Jury right. Down. Yeah, queen takes pawn is also. Mm, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not so sure that's actually okay for black, but it could be. Because you have some serious back rank issues as well. Right. So the king's exposed. So yeah, with the idea of yeah, just taking a pawn, right? Oh no, not taking a pawn. <laughs> so yeah, this would probably be fine for white. I can't imagine it's terrible, but maybe there's something better. How about rook two, white e three? White. That's an interesting idea. Um, black can't win right, now. right. Maybe queen d5 there would be okay for black. Just blocking off the diagonal. So king to g8 is legal after rook to f3. You're on the right track though. Yeah, but then, then the queen up and put b7 is pretty strong. Ah, uh, yeah, but still, rook to d8 there. Right, right. So queen e6 first. Okay, so this, the idea is, now this queen can never come here because of this. Or, well, first of all, the rook's attacked. And then when the queen comes here, you'll always have, like, queen e7 check. So black played rook to d8. Why is there not uh, d8? Why does it come Yeah, e8, it's just hanging, right? That would be checkmate. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm pretty sure, yeah, just lifting the rook and then giving checkmate. There's something you have to be careful of, though. No, I think it's fine. Yeah, All right, so yeah, just rook e5, rook b1, king h2, queen d6, trying to pin. But yeah. Just checkmate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop to one checkmate, not quite the other. See, that was a very nice game. Yeah, that was nice. I'm sorry, are there any questions? Because I, I think I feel like I went through that kind of quickly. And well, it's uh, mate, huh? Yeah, I think wow. mate was played on the board. Yeah, I'm pretty sure mate was. Well, <laughs>